get going. So, all right. So welcome. This is the breakout rooms in Google Meet. This is based off something that I found online from a, a guy named Clay Smith. And uh, I've kind of adapted it with regards to, to what we can do. So it's all built off of the idea of using nicknames to create your Google Meets. So if we use nicknames to create our Google Meets, and that's what the Meet in Classroom allows us to do, that's where we're allowed to uh, not give the actual link to the Meet, but give the nickname for the Meet. Uh, that way kids can't join it until we start it, and they can't initiate it on their own. So that's essentially the premise around what we're doing to create this uh, these, these breakout rooms. We need to create them in advance. There's a little bit of work that we need to do in advance and we need to open them before the students can get in. But once we get all the work done, once we create all these and it's not super difficult, then we can open them up and we can share them with students or we can assign them to students to get working from there on. So I am going to uh, make note of down in the bottom left-hand corner, there is the little thing that says breakout rooms and meet webinar. If you pop that open, it has the joining info and the stream info, but you'll also see at the top, it says attachments one. And uh, if you click on attachments one, you'll see kind of the document that I'm going to use to, uh, to go through and it kind of has the steps outlined. So feel free to make a copy of that, copy and paste it into your own, make your own notes, doesn't matter. This one should be view only, so you're not jumping in and, and making edits over somebody else's. But you feel free to use that. Uh, feel free to grab that now and run away if you want. Uh, I'd prefer if you didn't, but you're welcome to and uh, and go through that. So, all right. So we're gonna get going. I am gonna present my screen, and we will jump in on this document. So essentially, what we end up doing when we do this is we create a list of fictitious rooms out there, a bunch of nicknames. And I keep, I, in this document, I have some that are made up down below. Uh, if you click on the link, you'll be able to open it. If you were a student that clicked on the link, you would not be able to open that. So, so what we do is we create our master list, that's for us. We're gonna decide how we're gonna share that out. We're gonna decide that what, what we're gonna do with those. Then we're gonna create our names for our rooms. These don't have to be the same thing. They can be the same, uh, but we can change them up. We can just call it meeting room one, two, three. Down below, I use blue group and red group. If you have other names, if you're working on a project and you wanna create some specific ones for that, you can do that. Uh, then we're gonna create our, our nicknames. This is actually way simpler than it seems. I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do this. And then we use this here, HTTPS uh, meet.google.com slash lookup. So that prevents us from needing to give the actual link. If you schedule it in a calendar, you are giving the student to the actual link to the, uh, to the meet. If you look up at the URL up above, you'll see for this meet, it's mar-xreo-gaa. Once the students have that, that meet is active and they can jump into it and they can start taking advantage of it and it never goes away. So because it never goes away, it can be open always and forever. The students can get into that at any time. If we use this version with the lookup, that actually allows us to take advantage of the uh, nicknames. And then every time it opens up, it's gonna create a new one for us. And so we don't have to worry about the kids then going back in as long as we're the last ones to leave. We don't have to worry about the kids jumping back in and hanging out in there a little bit longer. So. After we do that, we decide how we're going to, uh, well, we create our links and then we decide how we're gonna present it to the students. Are we going to assign them to the different meeting rooms? Are we going to uh, let them select what meeting rooms we want? Um, we're gonna figure that out. And then the last thing that we need to do, sorry, I kind of mix this up six and seven here. Um, we essentially need to open the meeting rooms before we tell the students that they can go into them. So when we open them, I'll show you how to, because if you have five or six meeting rooms open on your computer, it is gonna get ridiculously noisy, but I'll show you how you can mute those individual tabs and how we can go on from there. So, so essentially down here, if you look at the second page of that, I created a quick table. I only did two meeting rooms, but it was, uh, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. We'll see if we can make that a little bit nicer. 
So I created a quick table there with just a couple meeting rooms. And this is the process that I would go through. We'll create another one down below. Uh, I used icons in this case, just in case we have some elementaries that were like, okay, you're in the blue team. We're going to click on the blue table. You're in the red team. You're going to click on the red table. And I can show you where I got those icons. It's linked right up here from flat icons. Great place for free icons. Just give the, uh, the copyright, you know, just say, hey, this is where I got them from. And they don't care if you use them as long as you're not selling them. Um, but basically what I did is I named my room. I created my nickname. Based on this nickname, I was able to create my link. And then I just copied that link and I pasted it as a link on here and as a link on here. So we'll come down, we'll create a new row just below this. And I'll show you the process that I went with. I won't, I don't have an icon ready for this one. Well, maybe I have an orange one. We'll see if I have an orange one, but we're gonna name the group. And again, you can use whatever you like, orange group. This is uh, possibly the easiest thing to do. All I do is tap on the keyboard randomly. So all I do, if I, uh, if you wanna think of it, I'm just throwing in random characters and, and literally I'm just banging on my keyboard here. There is no rhyme or reason. One thing to be aware of, I get rid of all of the, uh, the special characters. We want to keep it alpha and numeric. So you can make these as long or as short as possible. It doesn't matter. I think you want to go with probably at least seven or uh, yeah, seven to 10, I think at least. Um, but you can go longer if you want. You see this one up here is substantially longer. And now what we're going to do, I'm just going to steal this first little bit up to look up. I'm going to copy it and paste it down here. So I would use random other than actual words. And the reason is, is there's less, I mean, it doesn't really matter. You could use actual words. Um, I guess it's just Random to me is quicker. It takes me three seconds to pound the keys as opposed to typing out orange group You could use orange group though. There's absolutely no problem with that. So um, We're gonna grab this I'm gonna paste it in here and there is the link that we're going to use So with this we'll just copy the entire link I'm gonna highlight my orange group now I can go up here and I can go to insert. And because I've highlighted that text already, I can go down to link. The same thing if you're into keyboard shortcuts, the same thing is control K. So you can use control K as your keyboard shortcut. We're gonna paste that link in there and we are done. That is everything that we need to do to create those meeting rooms. So you can create as many of those as you think you're going to need. Keep adding them in. And uh, and then just hold on to that document and just maintain that document. It will open up a new meet every time we go to open it. It'll show you how to open those. And if we had an image, we'll see if I have a picture here. I may have deleted all of my pictures. Oh no, I have a couple here. Do I have an orange one? Yeah, I got an orange one right here. So we'll throw in an orange, uh, an orange table here. Just click on the picture. Same thing, you can go up to go insert and then all the way down to link, or you can see right here, it says the shortcut is control K. So I have been, uh, I generally miss keyboard shortcut. So I just throw it in there. I paste that link. And now this image, if my students clicked on it, if we put it somewhere, would pop up the shortcut link right here. And they would then have to click on that and it would take them to the Google Meet that we wanted them to go to. And there you go. So now you're seeing my Google link or my Google Meet. It has that random thing. The other thing I want you to be aware of is up at the top, we still have that uh, 10 character name, right? The, the 10 character code. That 10 character code still exists, but the minute we leave, as long as we are the last people to leave this meeting and we close that meeting, the students can't come back in and reinitiate that one because the next time that they click on this code, which is the same for the meeting classroom, the next time they click on that link or this code, it actually spins up a brand new meeting room. So it's gonna create a new meeting room and not use that old one. If they do grab that code and go back to the old one, they might be able to get in though. So it's again, 
we're, we're playing a little whack-a-mole trying to keep the kids out 100%, but we're going to do the best that we can by not uh, by not allowing them in there. And, and that's the last I'll say on the security piece. So, um, yeah, and so that essentially is it. So what I was thinking is how do we present this to the kids? What do we do once we're open? I created a slide deck here. And you can paste it into a slide deck. Now we're going to have to re-put in those... Uh, those meeting, or sorry, those links. So if we created and we added all of our links, we could just pop back to here, grab our URL, and apply it in there. And now this orange one became the link for the kids to get into the orange meeting room. So again, we could create it into here. We could have an entire slide of links of different documents, different projects, different meeting rooms for our orange group. And they could know, and we could also have a list of the students that should be in the orange group here. So they know which of their rooms that they want, should be going into. We could create additional slides for each of our different, different rooms by copying and pasting that slide if we had a template set up. We could then add in the documents and links that we wanted our orange team to be using for their meeting room, so. If you do choose words, will you be notified? Oh, went away, let me pull that back up. If you do choose words, will you be notified those words are by someone else? No, actually you won't, Stephanie. Um, that was part of the issue that popped up when people were using, uh, when they first started testing, when COVID-19 came to, to play here and they first started testing uh, Google Meets is a lot of people were using, were creating their Meet and then they were nicknaming it test or they were putting in test, you know, join a Meet, test. And uh, lots of people were using test. And so they were getting added to each other's rooms or something like that. So there's another, you know, maybe why you want to use just random, random pounding on keys, so. Okay, so I want to show you one more piece here. I need to make sure that my microphone's muted so nothing's coming through. Once we join that, so this is a meeting room. We can be in as many meeting rooms as we want. So I can add two or three of them here and we can keep adding into it. And I'll show you how I can open up more than one. Uh, up at the top, you're gonna see your tab for your meet. The red button means that it is, uh, it is active. You are sharing something with that, right? Either audio or video. If we right click on that, you can come down to mute site. And if we mute that site, this site is now muted. And so we won't be hearing any audio coming from that site. So if you want, and I am going to strongly suggest that you do this right now, take a look at the meet that we're in right now. I will keep talking. I will say nothing important and mute me by doing that. Just pop up to the mute site and click on that, right click on it, go to mute site. I'm gonna keep rambling on here about anything. I'll just give it a second. If you want, just post in the chat room that you're back or something like that so that I don't just keep saying random stuff forever. Um, but that's a way that you can mute and then unmute that site so that you don't hear what the students are saying in the background. Because really, um, we might not actually care what they're saying. We might just want to pop in and see what's going on, see which students showed up for their meeting room. Maybe, you know, unmute our microphone and say, hey, is anybody having any issues? Can I help? No, perfect. Pop back out, mute that site and go on to the next meeting room. Or we might want to jump in there with a single student and put them into that meeting room. So I'm only seeing Sandy that says that's great. So I'll assume the rest of you are either have me on mute and you don't want to come back or, uh, or maybe you're back and we'll keep going. I'm going to open up the other two rooms just to show you that we can be in multiple rooms all at once. Uh, one of the things to be aware of when we start doing this is we don't know which room is which. So so that, and actually Stephanie, that, that might be one reason why we might want to uh, use a name for these. Uh, and I will show you right away, Bina, where you can mute the, uh, mute the site. Um, we might want to use a name for that so that then we, when we jump into it, oh, I should mute that there. When we jump into it, we can see down in the bottom corner which of our different meeting rooms we're in. Yeah. So to mute it, Bina, if you right click on it, 
Oops, we have that one's already muted. We have that one's already muted. Well, I wonder if it already, oh, and it actually, sorry, okay. So here's one of the issues. Uh, if we muted the site, it mutes it at the root level. I didn't realize this, I, I haven't actually tried it with this many sites, but it roots it at meet.google.com. So it mutes all of them. Huh, well, that is not ideal at all because if we unmute one, it's gonna unmute them all. Dan, that might be one of the mute tab extensions that we might wanna take a look at. Yeah, and I, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this was a failure on my part because in an older version of Chrome OS, uh, you could mute individual tabs and then they took that out and I thought the mute site would do the same thing and it's not, so. Yeah, that's a good idea, Philip, as well. So, so let's, uh, I mean, this is kind of getting, well, we're only at 316. So we got some time here, but let's jump into the Chrome Web Store. And mute tab is one that's recommended. I try and avoid adding too many extensions because the more extensions that we add, we're always giving a little bit of, uh, a little bit of permissions away. So we just want to make sure that whenever we select any of these, um, that we're, we're checking on, you know, number one, what's the rating of that? And number two, who the developer is, uh, because sometimes we're seeing developers that we don't trust and we don't, uh, we shouldn't be trusting them. Oh, let's see, mute tabs by URL. Seems to be a whole bunch of them. mute tab here. So we got 77 and tab meter re-enables the mute tab op option. This one's got 84 and it's got almost five stars by Ash Holland. I don't know who Ash is, but we're gonna add this one in here. So it's added to Chrome. And I wonder, sometimes you have to, uh, sometimes we have to reload the sites before the tabs become active. I'm going to unmute all, and we should see it's unmuted for all. Oh, I wonder if this one just mutes everything. You know what? Instead of me monkeying around by doing this, if uh, if you guys are interested, send me an email later. The middle one is better. I should have looked down here. Dan, Dan's, the, Dan's the man with this. So uh, instead of monkeying around with this, I will uh, I will find one that's better. I will send an email out to everybody that registered for this uh, so that I can uh, I can recommend one of them. Um, and then I'll also include it in Thursday's webinar when we look at uh, extensions and stuff like that. So Philip had a good point in the in the chat here. He said, could you do a hybrid like orange and then mash the keyboard so you can see room name as part of it? I think that that's a wonderful idea. I think that's a great idea because something to easily indicate from the very beginning that we're in the orange room is ideal, that's what we want. So I'm gonna close off all these guys. And I'm gonna come back here. So I kind of, uh, I kind of ripped through that a little bit quicker. Uh, the, you have access to the notes and stuff like that. So if you do have any questions, um, please jump in there and, and feel free to ask them. But I'm gonna open this up. Does anybody have anything that I I need to address at this moment. So Nicola, for making sure that students can't get into the meet afterwards, is there a reason for it? Is it a district recommendation or just a personal preference? Um, personal preference. What uh, what we've been having a lot of requests from teachers um, for is they schedule it through calendar. And then they go back to that link later and they find that the students are back in there visiting, doing what they need to do. I will say in our admin panel, I can go in, if you provide me the link to your meet, so essentially the code, or you just say, I was the organizer, I can go back and, you know, we started it at 4.30 yesterday afternoon. That's a bad time. We started at 2.30 yesterday afternoon. I can jump back and I can take a look at that and I can tell you what kids were in there I can tell you whether they joined from their phone or a computer or a tablet. I can tell you when they turned on screen sharing, when they turned on their mic and, and little things like that. 
So if you ever have a concern about any of these, like I know some kids were in this one and uh, they, we, or I heard rumors they were in there at 1230 last night. Let me know, we can pop in there and we can take a look uh, and, and then you can, you know, address it with your students. But essentially it's a personal preference. There is no district recommendation. We also know that if, you know, the kids are gonna go onto Instagram or go onto Facebook or Discord or WhatsApp, and they're gonna have these video chats in other places. Uh, so it's not as though we're not aware that they're not chatting. Um, the only thing I would say is that we're just trying to limit their access in some cases. So I missed how you link it to the class. Okay. So all we did, uh, Renee, is, and I'll share that back. Here we go. So to send it to the class, to send it to somebody, we have to, we don't actually link it directly to the classroom, but to share it with them, I took either the image or we could also take the red group. I did it in a Google Slides, but you could also do it in a Google Doc. So if we can imagine, this is a brand new Google Doc, I just created a new page here, but if this was a brand new Google Doc that we wanted to share with the students, so we wanna say the red group and who's in the red group, we're gonna list down Renee, we're gonna put Dan in that group, uh, we're gonna put Fatima, we're gonna put Jason in that group as well. So that is the red group. Once we have that, oops, I need to go grab that link. So we're gonna pop up to our red group and we're gonna grab this link. And then we're gonna come down, highlight that and insert a link, either from the insert link or control K. And we're just gonna drop that in there. And now you could share that with that. If you knew the students up front and you said, I know that these four kids are the only ones that need it, maybe you send them an email. Or if you're using Google Classroom, and I don't have one that has four or a whole bunch of students in it. But if we we're using Google, Google Classroom, I could go to, oh, I do have one with six in here, so. I could create a material and I could say red group breakout room. And maybe I'm gonna add some additional description in there and I'm gonna say this is for students in the red group. Over on the right hand side where I get all students, I'm gonna click on that and I'm only going to make it available to, um, let's see my last three students, my student number two, student number three and my virtual teacher. So that means that those are the only students it will show up for in their classroom. Then I can grab that and I'm gonna add the link. Hopefully I still have that, perfect. Paste that link in there and post it. So it will show up on mine. I should have used a topic. You know what? I didn't put a topic in there. I should have a topic uh, that is something. So it's easily organized. Organized. Um, it, all of them will show up in mine because as a teacher, I see everything that's in the classroom, but only the red group, only the students I assigned it to, will it show up in their link. So even if you, you don't even need to put red break or red group breakout room, you could just put breakout room and they may all think they're going to the same one. So it's a simple way just to, I would say, connect it over there. It is different than the meeting classroom up here, but it adds it into there. So I hope that answered your question, Renee. Perfect. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Nicholas Happy Bina. If I use the same link for each group each week, will the link only work for students if the teacher opens the link first? Yes, that's correct, Bina. Yeah, with this one, because you're using a nickname to get them into it, it uh, it is it is loading up a new room. And so when you go in and, and assuming that you're the last person to leave, when you close it, the kids can't get back in. Now, Bina, we would have to check with Andrew on, on how uh, Masters is set up. I don't know how you, if you guys have the same functionality set up, I know that this is how we have our Palliser one set up. If you want to talk to him and get him to give me a call, we can absolutely run through that and, and we can walk through this process with him, but yeah. So. And then the students also need to know the nickname with random characters, right? Now, if you want them to type in the nickname Kelly, they would, but if you use the link like we just did in classroom there, 
or if you dropped a uh, an image on a spreadsheet or sorry not a spreadsheet but a slide presentation or a doc or something like that then uh they they don't need to know the nickname with the random characters all they need to know is where to find that link um so if you put it in their classroom and then you say this is your breakout room and that link's in there they never need to know the random characters just like they don't need to know the one for a meeting classroom so uh, no, Calgary Christians on uh, on the Palliser uh, Google domain. Uh, Masters has their own Google domain, so so they are slightly different. Yeah. So. so I could probably blather on for a bit more if you want, and uh, but I, I really think that that's that's kind of the end. I'm gonna you know after this, I'm gonna fire off and fi figure out the best mute tab. Uh, from there, Dan had a recommendation, so I'll take a look at that one as well, and uh, and I will email it to you. All of these recordings get added into the uh, calendar event. If you haven't already, uh, there is a P PD calendar. Um, I should actually, if you're okay, I'm going to share this with you really quickly because I think that... This was shared out um, in a couple different places. You're welcome, and, and please feel free to leave if you want. I use, and I'll drop the shortened link into the, the chat window. Actually, I'll throw that in now, just in case you want to look from your end. It is bit.ly slash P-A-L dash L-E-A-R-N-S, learns. Um, so this is our Palliser Learning Service page. If you come down to the Professional Development tab, we're adding some additional features and stuff like that. You have the ones to the uh, professional or regional consortiums and everything. You have a couple static links in here. We're adding some more. But down below are all of our scheduled PD activities. So we're trying to keep a Google Calendar of all of these PD activities on here. You can subscribe to the calendar and get notifications from your end. Uh, or you can just come and take a look here. So meet in classroom. That was last one. Oh, here we are. Breakout rooms in meet. If we click on that, you can add it to your calendar, copy to my calendar. It'll create a new copy of the event. So anything that changes won't be updated in there. So I just added the uh, the attachment earlier today. It wouldn't be in yours if you make a copy. Um, but if we go back to one of the previous ones, for example, meeting classroom, you will see that the links to the recording and the links to the chat window from whenever we started the recording are also in here. So you can you can fire back at any point to take a look at that um, if you want. I have also shared out on a couple, and I try and I try and put this in the three from the tech teams, um, but I have shared out the uh, the folder. And I need to upload, I, I know I need to upload these to YouTube or something like that. Um, but I shared out the my folder here. If it'll go there. Maybe it was a bit there. All of my, anyway, all of my links, all of my video links and any of the documents that I've shared and stuff like that, I throw in a folder and I try and include that one in my, uh, in the three from the tech teams as well. For some reason, oh, down there waiting. Yeah, so any of these webinars are in my getting to know Google uh, webinar. So I've shared out this link. I'll drop that in there as well. And again, it doesn't matter. You can share that if you want or you don't need to, but uh, they're in there as well. So you can always go find these. Uh, what then is the difference from the regular Google Meet versus a breakout room option? Is it mainly being sure that students can't come back in the link without the teacher present? Sorry for misunderstanding. No, don't apologize, Kelly. That's a okay. Um, so a regular Meet, and, and if we're using the regular uh, Meet in classroom, what that actually does for us is uh, it has a static link there all the time. 
but maybe we have 20 kids that we're working with and we want to split them apart into smaller groups. So we want to give them, and, and for you, Kelly, with your, your little ones, you might not want to do with this with them, but we want to split them into smaller groups so that the kids are coming in and working on a project and it's just a small group, or maybe, you know, I have my entire class working over here, but I want to pull out these three kids to work with my EA or something like that in another space. So what I would do then is I would maybe use one of these breakout rooms so that the main group can still be working together, but then we have our separate group working uh, in another room. So that's the only advantage to that one, I think so. And actually Stephanie's here and Stephanie, I know they use it all the time with PBB. So Steph, if you wanna unmute your mic and chime in on some of your uses, I would be happy to hear that, so. I'm sorry, I have to be honest. I was multitasking and sending an email to someone else. So you're gonna have to um, repeat that. I will, I'm, nope. I'm here and my body's here. <laughs> Sorry. That's a, okay. That's a, don't apologize. Um, we were just looking at some of the reasons to use breakout rooms. Yeah. Okay. So the way that we use our breakout rooms is if we have a number of different classes going on, we have students join into our main room, which would be this room here where everyone is meeting. And then uh, depending on uh, the number of students we're meeting or what classes we're meeting in, like we have career and life management and we have HCS courses or sorry, CTS courses. We've got the uh, core courses. And so what we would do is students would come into the main room. So they only need one link. They don't need 10 different links, right? Or whatever, depending on what class that they're going to take that day. So they would only need one link and they come into that link and then we would break them out into groups um, depending on which which course they're they're here to see and which teacher they're here to see. And so that's the main reason why we would use breakouts. But if we are in a situation where we would want to have students working in groups, we could break them up into groups. And then we're in, again, this would be the main room, but we don't leave this link. We just kind of jump back and forth from it within this link. And if you want, I can show you what it looks like in a, just a different environment where we can bounce back and forth. I have it open right now. Is that okay, Jason? Sure, sure. Just to kind of get an idea of. Well, yep. While yep. you set that up, I'll I'll maybe talk over top of it while you're while you're setting it sure. up there, and and feel free to share your screen, please. Um, essentially, it sounds like PBB is using it as kind of a lobby, as a foyer, where all of their students come yep. into one space and and see what's happening in that one space, and then when they need to go to their math class, they pop over to another breakout room or uh, can you or their science class. Yep, we're seeing yeah. your screen. Can you, so. can you see my screen? Okay, and so this is the main room, which is like where all of us are meeting right now and, and meet. And so it, students would come into this main room and they would have the one link. Uh, so it's not specifically that link, actually. Students get this link here. This is the link that they have to access all the time. And so they would come into this room. And so let's say we have, uh, it's more like a triage, right? And so the main room is like that, okay, who are you here to see? Let's jump into a breakout room so we can chat so that in the main room, when if other students from other classes wanna join or wanna talk to a teacher, they can come into that main room and then we can move them where they need to be uh, as they need. What I do with my crash courses is all of the students come into the main room and we usually have audio issues, right? So students' mics aren't working or their headsets aren't working or they can't, whatever, whatever the case may be. So what I do is I go, I move myself into, you can see here there's group one and group two uh, and Allison is in group two, but with I'll move myself into group one. I can rename these and I, could, I would call it HCS crash course, for example. And so all of the students that I know have their audio working and have their, their mics working, they'll move into that group with me and we'll get started. So if we're scheduled to start at 10 o'clock, we get started at 10 o'clock and in the main room then, Allison or Steve or whoever is in that main room at the time, they are working with those students who are experiencing those audio issues and then as they work out those issues, then they move them into that breakout room for me so that I'm not, I'm not spending an extra half hour of my two hours trying to get these students set up, uh, you know, with their audio and stuff like that. So, you know, it's like a village, right? I can't do I can't do this without my village but so that's one of the main reasons why I specifically use breakout rooms is so that I can get the support from my team to do those audios and the logins and the whatever issues so that that when they join my breakout room they're ready to go I know that they hear I know they can speak I know that they can see and and they're good to go they're good to start learning does that make sense 
Awesome. Thanks, Steph. No, that does. And that's, that's an interesting, you know, interesting perspective based on, based on what you're doing. And, and we're, I mean, we're all in the same, uh, same situation now, but, uh, that is cool. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. So, yeah, you bet. So, uh, I mean, we're at the end of the scheduled time together. Uh, I'm okay sticking around. I will, I will stay in here for a bit, but I am going to, uh, at this point, if there's no massive questions, um, I will, uh, I'll turn off the recording. Um, oh, Marla, Jason, yeah. Just one other question. So say if you're teaching grade six social studies, I have everybody on a big Google meet hangout and then I want them to break out. Can I just copy that link in the chat and say, okay, Joseph, Jonah. Absolutely. Yeah. Then. Yep, you can then, give that same one, right? And that was the slash lookup slash yeah, random yeah. characters. And just you can add drop that, that in there. Chat. Yep. And then the kids can just hit on that right away, and then they're moved into that other group. Absolutely, yeah. And they would, and then they would have to leave the original meet, right? Well, they wouldn't have to, but they should mute themselves in one meet and unmute themselves in the other meet. You yeah, know what I, I could mean? say in twenty minutes come back yep. to the original meeting group yep. and let's see what yep. we came up with. Perfect. That's exactly. all. Right. Yeah. Cool. And and that was the same question I was wondering, because I think Stephanie's example was with the blackboard. And yep. so that is a little different where you were showing the other day to us, but um, mm -hmm. that's where the teacher is in control of that and has the groups ready to go on that sidebar with Google yep. meet. Um, just what, Marlis said, I was just thinking, how do I do that in Google Meet where I have links ready to go and I could do that in the chat? Send. Yeah, so so you could either, like Marlis was saying, you could either just drop those and say, okay, you know, Kelly, Stephanie, and Marlis, you guys are in this group, I need you guys in here. Or you could create a document like I had or a slideshow yeah. like I had, and then just say, just drop that document into, uh, into the chat okay. and say, open this orange group. You go to your orange yeah. group page. I'll meet you guys in your breakout room shortly. Right. And boom, boom. And you have them just giving them a little bit more, you know, yeah. a, a Again, different angle. So I know yeah. we're just so difficult when we're working with such littles, because then I go, how to, how do I get them to figure out where to click? And <laughs> oh, I know, especially with your, with the little yeah, ones, so. the first few times is going to be a debacle. They're going to, exactly. you're going to end up with people everywhere and that's okay. Right. <laughs> and, uh, but you'll cut, they'll, they'll figure it all out. This and, is and great. It'll come around. Cool ideas and great, um, problem, like solutions to the problems. So thanks. That's awesome. Good. I'm glad. So I'm going to stop the recording. Yeah, thanks, Jason. I just, I was curious.